Welcome to Health & Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Today we're discussing weight loss and overcoming the many barriers that dieters face. And here to give us some insight is the Chair of the Division of Preventive Medicine at the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Donald Hensrud. Thank you so much for joining Happy us. Happy to be here, Jennifer. So you have this great book out, The Mayo Clinic Diet. And we're gonna talk about it specifically in a little bit, but first I really would like to hear your philosophies because everyone has them, but you are really an expert in nutrition um, and, and that is so much a part of preventive medicine. What is your philosophy on where so many Americans go wrong in terms of their diet? There's been a tremendous increase in obesity in this country over the past few decades. You're aware of that, most people are aware of that. People didn't decide to gain weight all right. at once. There are powerful forces in the environment. And we have to overcome those powerful forces in order to keep our health, keep our diet healthy, and to improve our weight. Now this, um, there's a big sticker on the cover here, um, which you can't help but zero in on, that says this in includes a quick start plan designed to help you lose up to six to 10 pounds in two weeks. Now the first thing I would say as a doctor, you know what I'm gonna say. I is know exactly what you're going to say. We are trained to tell our patients one and a half to two pounds a week is the safe and achievable amount of weight loss they can expect. I don't want you to give away the whole book, but how can you say up to six to 10 pounds in two weeks? We were saying exactly the same thing until we came up with this program. In the lose it phase, it's a two week jumpstart phase where people make a lot of changes all at once. Add five habits, break five habits, and five bonus habits. Mm -hmm. All of these habits either will decrease their calories in, increase calories burned, or otherwise manage weight. It's simple, it's effective, and when you put them all together, it'll achieve this amount of weight loss. And obviously a good par portion of that six to 10 pounds is some water weight in the first. There may be, weeks. but what we do in the second phase, the live it phase, we take those habits that people changed in the lose it phase and transition them into long-term lifestyle changes. And that's the key, right? Absolutely. I want to jump right into one of my favorite sections here, which are the obstacles or barriers that a lot of people face when they want to either make a vast change in their eating habits or maybe even just tweak something subtly. So the first one is the nutrition obstacle. My family doesn't like to try new foods and it's too much work to make two different meals. Now that has gotta be one of the most common complaints you hear from people. That's right. What do you tell them? What are some of the strategies? There are many different strategies for that. Involve the family. If, if they aren't totally on board, they're not going to eat it. But with children especially, for example, what we do, we in involve our children in the cooking. They like to mix, yeah, they like they love to it. chop vegetables. They like to make a mess. <laughs> Some adults like to make a mess too, right? And that's teaching them how the importance of good nutrition and making good food right. at an early age as well. Um, second one is nutrition obstacle number two. I can't resist certain foods like chocolate and candy. Now, I remember a conversation I had with a patient once where I said, you really, you have to give up X, well, I forget what it was. And the person said to me, y do you understand that's like telling a smoker they have to quit smoking? I don't think people realize that with foods, it can truly be a psychological addiction to a certain food. And we're not talking about addiction in the sense of overeating necessarily, we're talking about someone who cannot pass a chocolate chip cookie without eating it. My mother, who's Italian, cannot pass a donut <laughs> without taking a bite of it. I, I don't think it's possible. So what do you tell them for that well, obstacle? For chocolate, if chocolate is somebody's uh, uh, issue, for example, it usually doesn't work to say, I'm never gonna eat chocolate right. again. Because after That's about right. two weeks, the one pound bag exactly. of chocolates comes out and boom, they're off right. to the races. So what I tell people, Fill up on other foods, eat healthfully. We recommend all the vegetables and fruits that people want to eat. Right. If they do that, then go for quality on chocolate instead of quantity. Right. And if they go for quality, so they can get the best yeah, piece of chocolate it. there is, be satisfied and stay on the program. And then of course, an added boost when you're talking about chocolate, not necessarily candy, but there are some antioxidants in dark chocolate, so you can really That's right. feel good about it in terms of your mind There are and some your healthy belly. treats. That's right. <laughs> um, next one is, I travel a lot and I often have to eat at airports, hotels, or events. This can be brutal for anyone with a strenuous work schedule. You have a work meeting. The food that's prepared in bulk is rarely the healthiest, as we both know. And if you're hungry and that's all that's available, what do you do? The, the key here, like many things, is planning and prevention. So whenever I travel, for example, when I came here, I keep some fruit and I keep some nuts in my briefcase. Mm -hmm. That way I've nev I'm never caught having to eat what's available. More and more hotels have workout facilities. 
this morning. I got up bright and early before coming right. here and, and got a workout in. So if you ch if you just incorporate that into your travel schedule and plan ahead, I think it is it is possible to That's stay on important. track. That's important. Planning and preparation is a good one for that. Absolutely. Uh, this one is the biggest one for me personally. I am so guilty of this. Nutrition obstacle. Since I'm not hungry in the morning, I often skip breakfast. One of our I do that all the time. <laughs> in our lose it phase, we add five habits, break five habits, and there are five bonus habits. One of the add five habits is eat breakfast every day. Numerous studies have shown that people who eat breakfast are better at managing weight. This doesn't have to be a full course meal, and there are different tips that people can do for this. Grab a banana on the way out the door. What could be easier than that? Or try some non-traditional breakfast foods. Prepare something the night before. Put out the cereal bowl if you need right, to do that. Right. So there are many things. Our bodies can get used to that. And for a period of time when I was in college, I had to walk across campus to, to get, get, get my breakfast and I stopped eating it. Now I'm used to it, your bodies get used to that, and they feel a lot better with fuel in their tummy. You know, one important thing that I think on, on the topic of skipping breakfast or eating it, if you will, is that oftentimes I think we as a society confuse thinness with health. And I think that one of the greatest things about this diet is it really is about nutritious, healthful eating. It's not just about weight loss. And I know that the nutritionist in my, in my own medical office, I tried to brag to her one day about the fact that I eat such a healthful diet and I admitted that I oftentimes skip breakfast. And she said, you know what? It doesn't matter what size you are and what number's on the scale. That's not good for your body. Absolutely. And I think that's a really important point. It is very important. Too many times people focus only on the numbers on the scale, right. and that can actually be counterproductive. When they don't see the numbers change as much as they want, they throw in the towel, they abandon their efforts and gain the weight. What I tell my patients, and this, is, this sounds funny, but I tell them, if you improve your diet and your physical activity and exercise habits, your health will improve even if you don't lose a pound. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Donald Hensford, and your team here at the Mayo Clinic. This is a great book. It is definitely sustainable, and I think that people cannot read enough books about nutrition and healthful eating, and hopefully you'll come back and see us. Thank you very much. So thanks for joining us for another episode of Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Until next time, wishing you good health.